What's up everybody? Welcome back to another form video. Today is gonna be about the run-up and how to properly aim with your footwork, with your legs. And let's get right into it. First of all, here's a super quick summary of the first two videos. So in the first two videos, I basically talk about, in the first episode I talk about how to properly throw with the hips and then in the second video I talk about the throwing arm and how to fix the nose angle with a loose throwing arm. Now in those videos the basic premise is that if you get into a good position you just have to stay loose up here and you can fire from the hips and you're going to throw a good shot at the super basic level. And today the run-up video is going to basically be about how to get into those good positions to set yourself up for a good shot where you can check off all those boxes, throwing with the hips and staying loose. So now let's really start. <laughs> Alright, so what exactly is a good position from a footwork perspective? I have this line here um, on the course, there probably won't be a line like this, but for showing how it's done, this is absolutely perfect. So I'm just gonna go into a standstill position here and I'm gonna act like my aiming spot, the spot I wanna throw my disc towards, is exactly lining up with this line right here. And if that was the case right here, I would plant my left leg in a way where my toes are touching the line and my right leg in a way where my heels are touching the line. You might have already heard this somewhere. I actually did a video about this with my dad on an Austrian YouTube channel quite some time ago. But that was a German video, so most of you won't be able to understand that. But I'll put the link in the bio just so you can maybe still check. But just so you know, this isn't this probably isn't something super new to you, but in general, this is still the way I like to to set up a, a standstill throw and yeah just to make sure everybody understands that. Now I will elaborate afterwards why this is kind of the perfect position but now I'm gonna ask some simple questions about the run-up and obviously answer them as well. Alright first thing I want to talk about is why do we even need a run-up? Reason number one it makes it easier for us to get the right hip back. As some of you may have noticed for yourselves, sometimes it's easier when you have a super short shot to go with a tiny little run-up step instead of a standstill. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is that when you have that little bit of run-up, you can actively get that last horizontal step that I also talked about in my first video. And it's gonna be pretty easy to get the right hip back because you can really push sideways. Whereas in a standstill position, that can be a little bit more tricky because you just don't have that last momentum. And reason number two, your body has a mass. And by moving your body towards where you wanna throw, that's naturally just gonna help you get your energy into the right direction. Because for example, you don't see a, a long jumper that wants to jump into this direction, run up from here and go across like this. Because it just doesn't make sense. He wants to accelerate his body weight into that direction. And the same thing goes for a disc golf shot. You want to get your weight, your entire weight, into the direction of the shot. Because it's actually going to make you pretty accurate. So here, that's reason number two. Now to sum that up. Basically, the reason the run-up is helpful is because we can convert this horizontal energy that we create by running up into a quick hip turn that's going to be easier than going from a standstill position. So that's kind of the, the main reason that we do a run-up in disc golf. So now that we have that down, I'm going to get back into my standstill position right here and kind of explain why this is optimal. The general rule in disc golf for me when it comes to the hips is in order to throw a hard accurate shot the hips need to do some sort of, I call it opening, which means getting 
back here because this is not going to be natural. You need to get your hips to open up and then they need to close towards the target again. Some, um, some coaches like to use these words the opposite way where for them this is closing, this is opening, doesn't really matter how you call it, you get the point. And with that being said, that's already kind of the reason why this is a good position. Because if I stand like this, I'm gonna leave myself enough room for some hip mobility where I can open up here and get a really nice long reach back, but I can still close my hips towards the targets again. Whereas if I did something like this, for example, opening the hips is gonna be super easy but closing is going to be pretty hard because I'm not going to get my right hip back here. I'm going to push kind of like sideways. It's not really going to work. And the other, like the opposite mistake is standing like this where opening up the hip is going to be kind of hard and closing it is going to be super easy but that's not really going to get us anywhere. So this seems to be the sweet spot. I'm sure there is some physical explanation for this but I'm not aware of that that's just the way I see it so we are in our position right here where we can open up the hips into a nice spot but then we can easily still get our right hip back and throw a powerful accurate shot along this line all right so now we know that this is kind of the position that we want to be in after our run-up. Now, how do we get into this position? Great question. And to me, it's pretty simple. My last steps should be pretty much on this line. So it only makes sense that the first steps are also on this line. What do I mean by that? Let's say I was trying to throw along this line and my aiming spot was somewhere back there. I'm not gonna start my run-up from over here. Because then I have to go sideways, sideways and still plan straight. Just doesn't make sense. So choose a straight line, maybe go slightly to the right because the last two steps can be slightly crooked. But generally speaking, I'm a big fan of just running up straight where you want to throw. So let's see if I can do this right here. I'm going to start my run up here. I'm going to go pretty slow. I'm gonna try to stay pretty much along this line with every step that I make. So let's see. Should have been a pretty decent alignment there. And as you can see, by running up in this line, first of all, I'm setting, my up, setting myself up in a great way where I can really plant like this, nice and horizontally. And I'm really setting myself up along the line that I want to throw. Which makes sense because that's where my weight is going. So that's probably also where my disc and my arm wants to go. This goes back to the last video I, I uploaded about how to keep the arm loose. Because if I go like this, nice straight line. There's nowhere my arm wants to go but follow this line. Whereas if you start your run up from the side, your arm wants to probably go here if it stays loose. So stay in a straight line. Common mistake number one. And this is probably the mistake that I see the most often when I do form reviews or I just watch um, more of like beginner to advanced players make. So let's see what that is. And as I just said, you might already imagine, it's the diagonal run up. And in my opinion, there's a reason for that that a lot of people don't really understand. So the reason that diagonal run-ups or something like this instead of going along the line is pretty simple. When people start to play disc golf, many of them start by only throwing with their upper body and just raw power, not really getting their hips into the shot. And all of a sudden when they try out like a diagonal run-up, naturally their hips are going to open up because when you do this and you plant super diagonally in order to do that you have to open up your hips and all of a the sudden they get this feeling of power because they're kind of throwing with the hips but not really because they're only opening up the hips right here 
but there's no way they can bring their right hip back. It's just impossible. So that's the reason why people stick to that, is because first time they try it, all of a sudden they throw further than before, but just because it's better than before doesn't mean it's good. It's just maybe better than, than nothing. So that's the number one mistake, and the reason this diagonal run-up can't work, again, is because while the hips may be able to open up a lot, first of all there is no alignment, and your body weight is already going way offline and second of all you are not getting your hips anywhere it's just not possible so that's common mistake number one that I see and you should definitely look out for that because it can cost you a lot of distance because if you can't close your hips you're missing out on a lot of power very common mistake number two that I see basically all of the time is people choosing a super fast run up that they can't really control. And now the issue is, even if you have a great direction in your run-up, so even if you stay along this line almost perfectly, you're gonna have some trouble stopping that weight, that energy that you built up. Because if you enter this last step with full speed, it's gonna be very, you're gonna be very prone to start pushing with the hips and exiting. And so my general rule for this, is if you can't stop on a dime on the last last step your run up is too fast don't run up so fast that your last step cannot stop you now for some people that means that probably means that they have to run up somewhat like this and that isn't an issue because you can still throw pretty far with a super slow run up so General rule number two, being too fast in the run-up is a way bigger problem than being too slow, in my opinion. So that's something to also keep in mind. So again, quick summary. This is the position that we want to be in. We want to get into this position by running up, walking up along the line where we want to throw. And tip number three, choose a speed that you can handle. If you can't, you're just wasting energy and probably accuracy as well. So those are the things to keep in mind. And that's basically, that's basically gonna be it. So as always, thank you for watching. Thanks to Disc Golf for you for making this coverage possible. As always, thanks to Latitude64 for the support. Thanks to Moby Disc Golfing for the support. Thanks to you for watching, liking, subscribing, writing comments. Um, the feedback has been absolutely amazing, so thanks a lot for that. And if you have any questions, please feel free to write a comment and see you in the next video.